Previously on Boyo Tropical. So, uh, Ethan is here. Hi, hi, Ethan. I love Jonathan Franks. Dude, Jonathan Fra- Flakes. Johnny <laughs> Johnny Flakes. Johnny Frost and jo- Flakes. He's here. Jonathan Franks. This show is so dramatic in every single possible way. Help! 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 I'm being, I'm being passed! Help! I think he's upgrading every time. He's actually running to the nearest spirit Halloween, and he's like, okay, let's yeah. get a better sight. This guy wasn't scared. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> hey, can you throw in that scarecrow and, like, some overalls? I want to make this one, like, really impactful. I don't know if it's too much work, but in the video, I think it'd be really funny if you did, like, a compilation of every time he walks out, like, all the silent. Things aren't always what they seem to be. Some things are beyond belief. So let's start with the boy who was scared of his closet. What were your childhood fears? The boogeyman? The monster under the bed? Or simply being afraid of the dark? What were you scared of as a kid? Uh, I was scared like anytime I played a video game that had an enemy in it. Any like confrontation. See, I'm still scared yeah. of confrontation. I'm really bad <laughs> at it. And now that the other kids have found out, he really has something to fear. This is a very difficult story for a mother to tell, but years have passed now, so I'll try. Don't you love when your show is shot in like 480p and you're like, nah, <laughs> this is quality content. It's like 2p. I can count the pixels 2P. I see on the screen right now. My favorite thing in 90s bullying, they just chase you. There's no real re- they're like, I don't know, man, I just want to beat that kid's ass. So they start running. They don't even have that in mind. They're just like, I just want to f- chase this kid. And they never get to him. If they do, they're like, all right can you run again actually i need to get some more cardio in <laughs> the mother is narrating this and she is just going hey my son's getting bullied and i don't know why what could i have possibly done so there's nothing that she could have done and she's like this dumbass kid scared <laughs> of this dumbass demon in his closet and the, somehow these kids know yeah i was gonna say so how did they're, they're bullying him and chasing him because he's scared of his mm-hmm. closet so, like, what what was the conversation that led to that? Like, hey, They're man, like, how do you feel closet. about your closet? You have nothing to be frightened of. Okay? <laughs> okay, let's go to bed. I think that's what makes shows like this genuinely stick out in my head. I remember shaking in my little boots. Because when you're a kid, you have no exposure to, like, horror ambiance. Because you don't watch horror movies as a child. So when well, you see shit like this or like goosebumps, <laughs> I yeah, mean, no, like I, regularly, you don't understand yeah. the tropes. So basically to sum it up, she's just taking him upstairs and be like, hey, you need to go to bed in your bed because I bought it for $300. So you need to sleep in that bed as much as possible. Huh. Let's see here. No, no, no. Let's check up this sleeve here. Heaven. Now tell me, Ethan, how many times did you check your sleeves to make sure there wasn't anything in there? I check every day because, you know, you ever put on a long sleeve shirt and you find like a dude in there and you're just like, hey, what the fuck? All right. Oh, and um, if you don't stay in bed, I'm going to get you. <laughs> you have to stay in this room you're scared of. You have to or I'll kill you. I see another door right here. Hey, look, mom. Hear me out. Put me in the closet. <laughs> Hi, Mom. I love you. I love you, too. You got good drinks. drinks. You, too. You drink. You got good, good drinks. Good you, too. too. Good treats. Good dreams? <laughs> good, said, good treats? I don't want them sweet, but I do want some good treats. I also love the way, like, the mom reacted. Like, he fucked up the line, and she was like, uh, uh, sweet dreams to you, too. Like <laughs> She, like, hesitates a little bit. Love you, honey. If you see your mom close the door mm. and you turn around, right. that door is open. I'm leaving. I'm yeah. running away forever. So, basically, the night goes on. He's like... <sighs> but he was fine. He's like, yeah. you're alive. That's all my job is. Okay, until you're 18, I just gotta make sure you're breathing. The brother's making fun of him because he's like, yo, but like, seriously, why is he being such a pussy? Like, Pussy afraid of a closet. So he's just teasing him. I'm pretty sure to sum up the confusion, 
the brother told his friends because he's a little older. He was like, "Yeah, my dumbass little brother is scared of <laughs> closet or something." Let's go chase him. They're actually trying to give him their lunch money. They're like, "No, here, take it, just in case." He wanted desperately to fit in and be a part of things, but he was labeled as a coward, the kid who was still afraid of monsters. So, <laughs> so they chase him occasionally. Also, the mom's like, "He was labeled a coward." Like, what the fuck is it? The 17th century? Like, was, he was uh, challenged to a duel at sundown. <laughs> You know what? He said, I've got, got a pee. He's got a pee. Nah, <laughs> come on, man. You can't, it no need to be rude. You know, have some hospitality. Yeah. Let him in. Let him pee. Let him in. Get him yeah. a water. Hey, you guys. You guys. Get him tomorrow. Let's go. Come on, you guys. Yeah, it's locked uh, anyway. We almost got him. Yeah. He's gotta go. Yeah. Daddy, he's gonna... I've had a lot of you, guys. Oh, you got him. 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 You remember that duel you were talking about? Yeah, yeah this is immediately. it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was trying to send warning shots, but they they overtook him. They went, bro. I'm not scared of you. Let me. <laughs> I want to see the demon, and I gotta take a piss. Hey, Danny. Hey, Is that the closet? When you say we, we open the door. What are you guys doing? Danny's about to meet his little monster. I'm 90% sure that's the sister, but I like the idea of that being a random person who's also chasing him from like the high school. <laughs> when she comes and she's like, I was just chasing him to give him cash, but you guys are taking it too far. This is like breaking and entering. Like this is and fucked up. If you read carefully, it says very clearly, no pedestrians, no pedestrians, comma, bicycles, skateboards, or vehicle ramps. Only cars are allowed in his bedroom. They're hooligans. They're absolute <laughs> hoodlums. What was the deal with the early 2000s and the 90s? Like, whenever a set designer had to put together a fucking room for a middle school or teenage boy, they always put road signs in that shit. I well, never knew anybody that had road signs. In they that saw room. Drew Gooden's vine where he said, road <laughs> In the future. And they went, this is going to be really marketable later. So if we can get yeah. out of that now. Because time travel is real in the 90s, but they stopped doing that. <laughs> Mom's not gonna know, is she, Debbie? You know, this could have a lasting psychological effect on Danny. Shut up, Debbie. Shut up, Debbie. I don't even know what psychological mean. Go in the closet. Well, okay, baby. Yeah, Brian, show him. But you're next. <laughs> uh oh. Uh <laughs> now, I want your assumption of what you think is going to happen in this. Oh, uh, no, they're going to open the door and all that's going to fall out is like a Halloween store skeleton with his clothes on it. That's a little too good of an assumption. Hey, what's going on in here? Huh? Who are all you people? <laughs> I don't want to bring race into it. But white people really just be like, hey... What are you fellow crackers doing? <laughs> are you friends with my son? I told you there's a monster in there. My brother's dead, but I'm right, and that's the important part. So, in my mind, that's a good place to end it. I'm like, oh shit. I don't know where the kid is. Yeah. That's impressive. That's where Goosebumps would edit, yeah. yeah. They kept going. Yeah. The cop is searching the whole thing. There's no way the kid could have gotten out of this closet except through the door. <laughs> this looks like Eddie Brubeck! He's got oh, the hair. He has does. the like, perfectly shaped mustache. I can't tell. There's two pixels, like you said. Yeah, this is Eddie Brubeck in like 25 years. Again, I think they have that time machine. So they went forward, said, <laughs> hey... We need Eddie Burbank with the mustache. You know, I think he did great in this role. Excuse me, Mrs. Johnson. I need to speak to my partner. I couldn't hear exactly what the police were saying to each other, but I guessed what the report would read. My son, Brian, would be officially listed as a missing person. Another young boy who ran away from home. It's really weird. Another great spot to end it. And they just uh, keep going. <laughs> she comes into the room and is like, hey, I need to talk to my partner. And then they just go deeper into the same room. That they're already in. She's like, well, yeah. excuse me, sorry, we gotta have a private conversation. And then has the conversation right in front of her. So it just keeps going. And 
obviously they're like, yeah, the kid ran away. And I think then they're just more like, likely. That's it. <laughs> Was that's that real or not? Uh, well, you're going to have to guess later. But don't worry, that's all of James Brolin that we're going to have to see. Thank God. Okay, so this one okay. is about something that I'll let him explain, actually. Yeah, it was the Frosted Flakes game. <laughs> I think the quality gets a little better. Well, they have a whole cool, like, set. Before it was, like, a void. Yeah. <laughs> things aren't always what they seem to be. Some things are beyond belief. Beyond belief. Okay, so my favorite thing about these is, like, yeah. the silent walking. <laughs> Like, yeah, he walked. He was no like music. They just things aren't always what they seem to be. There you go. I think he just missed the cue and he went. <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, I, I think he was just savoring it. He was like, "You know who the fuck I am." This is Jonathan Frakes, and Jonathan you are Frakes. the next caller. What? Mm -hmm. If it's true that the pen is mightier than the sword, what then do we say about the microphone? That's what every podcaster looks like in my head now. <laughs> well, it's the 90s, but he's also supposed to be like a radio host, but also like, why? Oh. Talk show radio hosts use this instrument to reach millions with thoughts and opinions designed to provoke, amuse, influence, and shock, all in the name of what they call good radio. Okay, line one, you're on with Kincaid all night. Go ahead. Hi, my name's Barry Adel. I don't Clive Kincaid was the hottest thing in talk radio. Clive made his living at the expense of others. So who does that sound like? It sounds just like Rush Limbaugh. Sounds like Keemstar. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, just to sum it up, this radio host, he's a dick. Mm -hmm. That's it. You believe you saw a UFO. Let me tell you something, pal. You haven't got a clue. You're brainless. You could sell space between your ears. Next caller, you're on Kincaid all night. What do you want? Is this Clive Kincaid? No, it's Ricky Ricardo. Whatever drugs you're on, why don't you up the dosage? I, <laughs> this I no, love this guy. No chill. Dude, dude, this is like, this is, I have a kindred spirit with this man. This man, he's iconic, but I hate him. I want to do this on a bit live on stream. Have people call and be like, hey, what the fuck do you want? Whatever pills you're on. <laughs> Double them. Double them. Triple them. You know I'm what? a doctor now. Give them to me, put them in the closet, I'll get them in the sleeve. My question's about your son, Robbie Griffin. What did you say? Robbie Griffin, remember him? Yeah, time to wave bye-bye. See ya, sonny boy. I like that he waves like they know he's waving. Yeah. Hi. You he's like, he's me. like, he could, the microphone could pick it up, like, just the air. <laughs> just a quick little. Because they're out there tonight in droves. We'll be back. So stay tuned and don't touch that dial. Clive, we got a slight technical problem. Uh, what are you talking about? I want this poster now. Fuck that. I, I want that. this. Yeah, it's in color except for his photo. It's He looks like Bob Ross, but like Italian. Bobolini Ross. <laughs> or it sounds like you're talking to yourself. Well, I can. Conscience is not the voice of God. It is the gift of God. Cheap cookies, they're all the same. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid cookies. Uh. I don't remember that. Cookies, they're all the same. Uh. <laughs> no, they're not. Kincaid all night. It's me again. Hey, only one call per wacko per night. I got hella tapes back here. Holy shit. Well, that's how I think the radio system used to work, is they just had, like, a tape with whatever song was going to be played, and they put that in the machine. That's so like, inefficient. Did earlier. Play <laughs> music on the radio. You know? He's just <laughs> saying, ah, wacko, and then he waves well, at the microphone. He put a tape in. That's like the oh, in-between yeah. music. Oh, uh, and then he ate a fortune cookie and came. And he was like, what do you want? You never answer my question. Do you remember Robbie Griffin? Wait, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I've always been honest with my audience. So I'll be honest with you. Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I met someone. She calls me a few months later and she tells me she's gonna have the baby. So you never called or visited your own son? I was going through Fort Wayne again. So I looked him up, I found him, and there he was, 
tossing a tennis ball up against the wall. You left out a part. I had a baseball glove. Who is this? It's me, Dad. It's Robbie. Robbie is dead. He died last summer! See, now that, again. Perfect part to stop it. This show could have been 20 minutes and I would have been just as invested. How do you think this is going to end? Wait, how, what else can happen? It, that's my fucking point with this show. They keep <laughs> going. Clive. Clive. Clive, unlock the door. It's not like too much. I mean, that's just fucking weird. Like, yeah. Just Clive. Keep going. Clive. I better call Artie. The hell do you want? No joke, it's actually a pretty good show. We yeah. Are, like, this dude's here, I'm pretty sure that's... That's Artie. Can't you cut him off? I'm trying everything, and the controls aren't working. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I think he looks at the microphone like it is a person, like a sentient being. Or as if that's where the audio is coming from. Yeah, so, <laughs> to shorten it up a little bit, uh, yeah. he dies. He has a heart attack. <laughs> oh! Okay. And and that's it. Jonathan Frakes is like, that's fucked up, right? Anyway, anyway, watch my live stream. It's going to be on Twitch. <laughs> that's that one. Okay, so let's see if the boy was um, actually fucking stolen. Scott? I told you there was a monster in there. Could the idea for a story like this have come from a real life event? Yes, it did. So like the kid had to have run away in the real life scenario. When they say true, it's very, very soft true very yeah. soft on the term fact what did you make of the radio talk show host who was well, your shirt is way too low from his dead son so there's no way that one was real What's i feel guess? like i would know i would know if this was real because th that means that the whole episode that this radio broadcaster had would have had to have been broadcasted and like i feel like i would have heard about it Was there an actual story that we based this otherworldly confrontation on? Not this time. You fucking got it. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Frakes. Frank. I like to imagine all the ones with uh, the other guy are true and all the ones with Jonathan the Franks are fake. Uh, that would be many more seasons of all. Of that would just be, hey, watch this fictitious show. That's why there's that compilation of him being go him going, I made it up. Is this story so strange that it must be true? Not this time. It's fiction. Hey guys, so I only filmed the one outro, so here's a bunch of Jonathan Franks. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're getting real close to 500 subs. I think we're going to reach the goal, and I cannot thank you guys enough. I want to go ahead and thank this boyo of the week. Uh, thank you so much for commenting. I like it. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, kiss the bell, because I might love you. And I'll see you next time, boyo. Bye.